discuss uh, you know, how I became a Greyhound parent myself and which organization I ultimately used. And then we're gonna dispel a few myths that you may or may not have heard about Greyhounds. And uh, you know, and then we're just going to uh, to end the the video on you know advice on equipment, accessories that you'll need prior to getting a greyhound, as well as advice on grooming and feeding your new puppy as well. So uh, yeah, first I wanted to uh, just discuss uh, how I became a greyhound parent myself. So uh, a few years back, I was uh, I believe it was 2017 was just researching. Uh, you know, I wanted a large dog. I grew up with dogs all my life so whenever I don't have a dog I feel like there is uh, I guess some sort of an emptiness uh, that my life isn't as uh, fulfilled as I would like it to be so I started doing research I wanted a large dog you know I grew up with a Shetland sheepdog and then my mom got the the runt of a litter uh, of Yorkies so uh, you know two two dogs you know medium size small size but I wanted a large one this time so uh, I live in an in a apartment and I actually just recently moved out of my childhood home uh, when I was researching this, and uh, I, I was looking at just large dogs that do well in apartments, so that's where I am. And uh, I saw a long list, you know, Afghan Hound, Bull Mastiff, Golden Retriever, Great Dane, which you probably wouldn't have even thought would be uh, a viable option for an apartment. But, um, you know, I also saw the Greyhounds, so I was taken back by how just elegant and beautiful they are. So I started doing some uh, some research, and uh, I was trying to find some, uh, you know, some, I, I guess I was looking for a breeder or someone that would have greyhound puppies because a lot of the times you're looking for greyhounds, you're going to be getting the retired, the racing dogs, like rescue dogs and everything, you know, they're like three or four years old. And I wanted to have a, a puppy. I wanted to be able to mold this, uh, this uh, beautiful dog into, uh, you know, to behave the, the way that I would see fit. And, you know, the older they get, the little diff more difficult it gets to train them, but it's not impossible either. But I just want, I wanted a puppy. I wanted to, uh, you know, form that relationship with uh, my Greyhound. And, uh, you know, I landed on greyhoundrescuesanantonio.com. And I uh, spoke with Sherry there, and it was, uh, you know, it was a long process. You know, you got to fill out a lot of paperwork. You got to have a, a phone call with her and everything. So, um, I knew she was legit. She wanted to make sure she was getting these these greyhounds to uh, to a good family. So, um, you know, I I then decided to go ahead with uh, Greyhound uh, Rescue San Antonio .com, which you should go to. They're they're a fantastic organization. They're actually on the uh the morning show uh in one of the news uh, stations in san antonio so you can actually check that out on the website i believe it's um you know on the home page and then yeah i just wanted to dispel a few myths about the greyhound you know a lot of people whenever i'm walking my dog you know they they come up to me and say oh they, they must need a lot of exercise they they probably have so much energy and they need to run all the time but it couldn't be farther from the truth they are they are just giant cats you know, in a dog's body, <laughs> they, um, you know, they don't need a lot of exercise, but, you know, make sure you can still take them out, you know, for a 20 minute walk, you know, twice a day or something, and then have them like go to a dog park somewhere where it's a, a big enclosed uh, area, you know, make sure there's fenced in because uh, if they see something, they're running after it. They're not going to listen to you. They're, they're just, uh, they have that, that drive in them. It's instinctual. So. Make sure it's fenced in, uh, six feet high, and uh, yeah, just let them run around like once a week, and and then that's it. You know, it's it's really not it's not like um, you know pit bulls have a lot of energy, but you know greyhounds they, they can sleep for like 15 hours a day. Like it's it's impressive how much sleep that these dogs can do. And then a lot of people also think they're aggressive because they wear the muzzles, but that's just um, all that is is because, especially when they're racing, they have to wear the muzzle because they'll nip at each other when they're, when they're in the race. But you know, they're just they're actually the complete opposite of an aggressive dog. They're actually very skittish. They're, they get scared easily. They don't do well in loud homes. So if you have a loud home with like a lot of you know, uh, I don't know yelling, I guess uh, don't don't get a greyhound. They're just not. They don't do well in those situations. It stresses them out a lot, and uh, and they're not aggressive with um, small dogs either. My dog, Zelda, she's a, a three-year-old greyhound, and uh, she gets along with any size dog, even the little ones. I think she has more fun with them, but, you know, they're, 
they're just wonderful creatures. They're, they're very docile. They're they're calm, and uh, you know they have their burst of energy. But that's that's about it. You know that they're not they're not crazy, and, uh, and most of the time you're not even going to realize they're in your house because they're just so quiet. They don't bark. They're sleeping all the time, and uh, the most you'll hear is them. Uh, they do some uh, singing, I guess you would call it. Whenever they see something, they're crying. My dog sees, uh, you know, the dogs that uh, live upstairs. They go in the backyard, and she'll start making these noises. She's crying and stuff. She's trying to get my attention, but you know, that's what you'll mostly hear is just them cry. So. Uh, not aggressive with small animals. They don't need a lot of space either because of their size. They actually can fit in these these little spaces. They they like to roll themselves up into a donut, um, you know, cuddle up next to you. They don't take up a lot of space. Um, you know, sometimes they roach. They lay on their backs. But, you know, they don't. They really don't need a lot of space. Just make sure you get them out twice twice a day at least for 20 minutes, and then uh, and then take them out to a dog park. You know, once a week, and they'll be fine. So. Uh, we're just gonna go to equipment now, you know, uh, you're, you're gonna be getting your, your Greyhound puppy, your Greyhound. Just make sure that you're, you're prepared for, uh, you know, having a, a dog now. So, uh, start off with, uh, you know, you can have a Martingale collar, that's usually the recommended, but my dog, she, uh, she would yelp anytime, it would just get a little too tight on her neck, so I, I, don't, I didn't like the, the feeling that she was being hurt, so I went with the harness. And uh, she, you know, she has more power with that though, because you know it doesn't hurt them. The choke collar, the martingale, is supposed to, you know, prevent them f from wanting to pull because it, it chokes them up a little bit. Uh, but I couldn't do that, so I just have I have one for her. Uh, she's a, got a harness that straps on, so she's uh, she's good with that. You can do either. Just know that you're going to need a little more strength if she starts pulling you, especially if she sees, you know, like a squirrel or something. Get a, a six foot not retractable leash make sure it's a six foot don't get that retractable one if uh, they see something they're going to start running and i also don't believe that they're strong enough those leashes are they're not they're not the sturdiest so make sure it's like a nice i have a leather six foot leash so um i would get that make sure you get the poop bags and you can actually clip it onto the leash and that's just convenience you know you're going to be picking up a lot of poop so Make sure you get that. And then uh, when it comes to like, uh, you know, stuff inside the house here, make sure you get uh, a large dog crate, a uh, kennel, and, uh, and make sure you get a large dog bed that goes inside of it because, uh, you know, they don't have any body fat. They're, they, they don't have a, a double coat of fur. So just make sure that, you know, they're comfortable. They're gonna need a lot of, you know, you're gonna wanna put some pillows and cushions and blankets and they, they just they need it because they, they, they're just real bony and it's it would be, it's painful for them to just sleep on the floor so it don't don't let them just sleep on the floor it's gonna be you know it's just gonna cause them pain so make sure you get the dog crate and uh, and the dog bed and then of course for the you know the dog crate make sure you get two uh, two quart bowls so one for the water one for the uh, the food and, uh, and they get the little clips. Uh, it's the Snappy Fit Dog Kennel Bowl, uh, like little, uh, I don't know what the heck you would call it. It just it clips onto the crate. So especially if you have to leave, just put the bowl, like the water bowl and the food inside there with them so they can eat and drink, um, you know, if you're not in the house, especially during crate training. But we're, we're gonna get into crate training in, in the next video. So uh, this is, we're just getting the equipment down first so, so you're prepared. If you live in a cold climate, they, they don't have any body fat, like I said, and uh, one layer of fur, one, <laughs> so they get really cold, like uh, before I got my dog a, a coat, which you're gonna wanna get a winter coat for these dogs, and it's kinda difficult to get them the right one. Um, I'm gonna try to find the one that I got for my dog, or actually my mother gifted it to me, but you're gonna wanna get a winter coat. They're gonna be shivering, you're gonna see them shake if you, if you go on a walk with them during the winter, so make sure that they're, they have that warmth, uh, you know, being trapped in there. Um, and then the rain, like, you know, when it rains, you know, uh, at least my dog, I don't know if it's for every greyhound, but it's, she will not go outside if it's raining. She just doesn't like how it feels. She'll, she'll turn right back, even if she didn't go to the bathroom for a long time. She's gonna turn right back and she's gonna go back in the house. She's not gonna go to the bathroom. And then I just feel bad. So I got her a raincoat and 
she, uh, you know, she can handle it. You know, some some raindrops go on her head and, and her feet, and uh, but that's, you know, that's about it. She, but she can actually walk around, especially on a rainy day, and they look absolutely adorable in these things. So uh, I, I would definitely invest in that. And then the the hot climates, you know, if you're if you're in Florida or something or Texas, uh, just make sure that they have a lot of shade, they have plenty of water, and uh, if you see any signs that they're overheating, greyhounds overheat very quickly. They're one of the more susceptible breeds to uh, to heat, uh, heat stroke or heat exhaustion. So, you know, if the inside of their ears get red, if they if they're panting uh, just excessively. And uh, they might even lose balance a little bit. So just make sure that if it's a really hot day, you know, 80 degrees and above, start monitoring how, how they're reacting. So just make sure that they're 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 safe, and especially you know you you, don't, you do not want to have a dog with heat exhaustion, especially when it's sensitive as greyhounds. Um, and then yeah, and then we're gonna go to green, grooming real quick. The uh, I got a rubber horse grooming mitt. It's been the best one. I've used several different uh, grooming. Uh, I guess mitts and brushes and stuff for, for my dog. So this one is by far the best one you can get. Greyhounds have very sensitive skin. Um, you don't want to use like those metal bristles. It won't even get the, the fur off because they, they have such a like a short coat of fur. So this is the best one to use for your Greyhound. It uh, doesn't, doesn't hurt them at all. Uh, yeah, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, it's, uh, they really do like it for the most part. See, she's showing me, uh, showing me her belly here. So I would absolutely pick this up. I recommend the, the horse mitt. It was the only one I could find. There, I, didn't, I couldn't find one for dogs. So um, I was looking for, uh, <laughs> she's nibble on it. I was trying to look for a, a brush that's good for short hair dogs, especially like this. It's just, it's difficult to find the right one. So I actually just stumbled on uh, just the, the, the rubber glove for horses. And uh, I think I found a spot there. <laughs> so um, it's it's definitely the one that you're gonna want to go with. I've tried several brushes, none of them worked as well. I mean, this this just picks up all of, all the fur that you need. Let's see if you can see any fur on this. Let's see. Yep, yeah, you can see it. All right. Well. I, I brushed her recently, that's why there isn't too much, but... And then I suck up the, the fur with a vacuum, so, you know, if you're gonna do it inside, just make sure, you know, you get a vacuum, just suck up the, the loose fur that's on the mitt, because it's gonna start flying everywhere, but I, I would definitely recommend the rubber horse grooming mitt. And, uh, and then, of course, if you, if you want to try a toothbrush and toothpaste, uh, they absolutely hate it. And I, I tried for a long time to get her to, to get used to it, but she, uh, I think the older she got, the angrier she got that I tried doing it. So I unfortunately can't use it. Uh, it's a, a toothbrush that goes on your finger and you put the, the enzyme enriched uh, toothpaste. And so it's just a little difficult, but um, you can do that. And then of course, a, a nail clipper which I have, I haven't used, I'm too scared to cut open uh, her veins, uh, you, you know, her quick, I don't want to cut her quick and have her bleeding all over the place, so uh, you can get those. And then, uh, yeah, finally, we're gonna go to food. If your Greyhound is a puppy, uh, you know, this is what I did, you don't have to do this, but I'm just recommending from my experience, uh, you know, what, what kept her healthy and, and happy was the, uh, you know, the, the solid gold wolf cub bison and oatmeal puppy formula it's a 24 pound bag of dry food and uh and i, I supplemented that with some nature vet vita pet puppy vitamins and minerals which is are uh, these uh, chewable vitamins you can put in the food and they they love those they'll just eat it right up um and then uh you know as an adult like she is now i feed her origin fit and trim it's uh, a 25 pound bag it's actually on the more expensive side but it's very high quality high protein content, which is great for a, a dog like um, like Greyhounds. Um, but make sure you feed them a little more than uh, it shows on, actually, I would say about a cup extra than it says on, on the bag, because you know, you kind of have to just gauge it on how much your dog can retain, you know, weight. So, uh, especially if you're gonna feed something like that, make sure you're, you're feeding 
um, you know, more than is on the bag because greyhounds inc have incredible uh, metabolism. So, um, Origin Fit and Trim 25 uh, pound bag. I got her uh, her new vitamins after she became an adult. Is the uh, the Zesty Paws five in one multivitamin, and it's a peanut butter flavor. It's 90 count, so uh, she eats those. Uh, sometimes she eats those first, and then walks away from her food, and then comes back later to eat some more. Um, and then uh, you know you can you can also uh, put you know olive oil or fish oil, but fish oil for dogs. It's uh, you can get that from any uh, pet store or online thing like Chewy or something like that. This is just for their coat to make it nice and shiny. And um, you can also put eggs, chicken, you know, stuff like that for their food. And then snacks, um, you know, uh, bully sticks, uh, Himalayan large dog chews. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can also like put peanut butter in like a Kong toy and put it in the freezer and get that, uh, you know, it, just take it out. They'll be licking it for a long time, keeps them busy. So uh, we're going to get into that next video. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about how to train your puppy once it's in the house and uh, what worked for me. That's it for today. We're gonna go into uh, training and uh, tips and tricks for your new puppy in uh, the next video. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this video and hope to see you again. channel to get more of this beautiful beast and myself. See you next time, guys.